Yeah, welcome back to our stream, Writing Web Apps with Closure. Um, as every Friday on Twitch, um, lunch and learn, some people call it. And um, yeah, really happy to have you as a viewer again. Uh, just write in the comments where you're watching from, who are you, what's your experience with Clojure, and let's get started. So I'm trying a new window switching system, which should prevent me from always enabling the wrong scene. And I hope it's it looks good. I give it uh, a test spin, and uh, everything seems to be working. Let's 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 see. I'm uh, excited to try this out. Let's up the resolution a little bit. Okay. What have we done so far? Until now, we have managed to write a web application which um, um, enables us to host two pages. It enables us to host the main page and it enables us to host the friends page. So if you access the web application via slash, you will get the main page. And if you access it via friends, you will get the friends page. Let's try this out. Oh, wait, there I forgot. A, for the auto switcher, I forgot one config. Let me just quickly add this. Ta -ta -ta. And let's check Emacs. Terminal, very nice. Okay, preparation is everything. Okay, let's start the application with line run. The doc is excited too. So the application is started, and then we switch to Chrome. And we see our Hello World application with Home and Friends. So um, now it would be nice if we had some way of storing state, right? Um, so what we are going to do today is um, we will add um, database connectivity to our application and we will um, add a tool which enables us to um, perform database migrations in different environments. The cool is, tool is called uh, Migrators. Um, if you are working with Java and you know FlyCheck, uh, Flyway, then this might be a, a familiar concept to you. And uh, we will create a JDBC connection with the library NextJDBC, um, which is an excellent library by uh, Sean Corfield. I need to make more time for preparing food. Okay, let's start. Um, first, we're searching for NextJDBC. We find the GitHub project and we find the link to Clojars. So we just take the dependency and open project CLJ file and add it. Let's check the docs again. How do we implement this? Um, let's check the getting started guide. Uh, documentation of the library is uh, really well done in my opinion. Okay, create and populate a database. First, we uh, it seems that we need to require the library, which makes sense. Uh, 
Mm. And we do this at the very top as we did with all the other ones. Okay. Um, and let us define the database directly in our resources file. You remember, if you watched previously, um, we created a config file with the uh, Yoktos config uh, library. And let's just add db here as a new flag. We will use that in the application. Um, the db spec hash map. So um, next we want to have a hash map containing the db config. And um, this I will steal from another demo application I'm doing for my blog for the scrapbook. We need to define the sub protocol, the sub name, the user, and the password of our DB connection. And we go back to our main namespace. In the getting started, we see that there is a function jdbc get data source. And let's just plug this in the main method for starting. Okay, we get the the key db from the environment config. That's right, and we pass just we pass the the whole map uh, directly into um, next JDBC. So we should store this. In a let. And Let's check if the application still runs. Unknown DB type and class name not provided. Yeah, that's true. We forgot to um, also add a PostgreSQL driver to our environment. And we forgot to add the db type. So if we do this, I'm pretty sure we don't need to specify the class name. Let's again steal this. And let's try again. The server started. 
now interesting to me is, is my Postgres database started at all? It's not, we have a, that's from my project. We don't need Oracle now, and we don't want Oracle now. A mm, lot of things. This is the Postgres DB we want. Okay. Um, I would like to test if we can connect to Postgres already. And um, there is um, ah, S Pfeiffer. Hi, Stefan. Thanks. <laughs> um, I was now for Oracle um, if I want to test if. Um, I can fire a statement against the DB. I can do a select uh, asterisk from dual. Uh, for Postgres, I keep forgetting um, how it works. So I always end up Googling it, and I always end up on this side. Um, select one. Now that's easy, right? Okay, then uh, let's do this. We have our data source, and I believe we have a connection to the database already. And Let's see, I'm just checking in the, if the schema is empty. It's not. As I said, preparation is everything. I'm a little short on time because uh, yesterday night my dog was sick. So uh, if you wake up to the sound of your pet vomiting on the carpet, the night is done for. Okay, back to food. Um, the database is now empty. And here we were in our get it start getting started section for next JDBC. So if we have a data source, we can just call the function execute with the data source. And then we um, write in a vector the query followed by uh, SQL parameters. OK, I got spam in my chat. Cool. Let me just get rid of that. Um, yeah, let's try this. This is uh, looks pretty straightforward. Mm, rearrange my windows. Sorry for this. We have JDBC execute. We pass in the data source. We say select. One. Easy as that. Let's see. Character cannot be classed to cast to Java lang string.
Mm -hmm. Yes. I even told you that we would need to put this in a vector, and I still forgot. But the error message is not really clear about this. Does anybody else think that too? So I passed in a string and not a vector, and it. Nah, never mind. Ah, no, 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 no. It expects a vector, and if I pass in the string, it interprets it as a vector of characters? Is that possible? But now it works. Um, so we're not seeing any output here, but um, it is possible. And now, um, let's see if I can do this here globally. Stefan, you have uh, a lot of more closure experience than I do, I'm, uh, I believe. Um, how do you handle data sources? Um, I talked about this um, last Friday too. Um, do you just put it here globally? Do you use atoms? Uh, do you use something else? Um, what do you prefer? Oh, no, okay. <laughs> um, this is what I wanted to see. Okay, um, I extracted the data source and deft it globally, so um, it still works. Okay, so now Let's try and access the database on an HTTP request. Um, I believe JDBC execute will return a vector of results. Um, as we can see here in the documentation. So JDBC execute. Um, returns a vector with, wait a minute. Now it's time for cider. Um, after all those time, I'm not, still not really used to the REPL based workflow. Um, I know it's one of, the key features of Clojure, but I still uh, find myself way too often um, just saving and executing again. Um, would be nice to have some references here because in Java for 10 years, I just looked at what my team members do. Ah, Slyphin, hi. Nice to see you again here. Um, thanks, Integrant. Uh, I heard that very often. I will check those out. Um, because this is something, I believe, if you do it wrong, data source handling, then you're entering a big world of pain. Um, and this approach, I believe it's way too simple, uh, way too much simplified. Okay, let's check if our data source is already there. It is. Cool. And JDBC... Execute. Missed the data source, obviously. Okay, and we re we we get a vector with a map with column question mark. Uh, because um, this is a computed column and uh, JDBC Next just can't have any idea how it's called. So let's see if I can call it num. 
Yes. So now the column's name is none. And if we want to access all of the results, um, then just map num. Yeah, not that much. Um, in this case, we know that there will always be only one result because select one num will always, um, yeah, n will never return a vector of results. For this, there is execute one. So we probably want to use this in the web app also. Sorry for this. Okay, now we get um, a, a map with the key greeting and notice how it's automatically converting the column name to a keyword, that's nice, and the value hello. So in this case, I would prefer to do it like this. Start everything again. Sliffin, do you have any great resources on closure development workflows? Because uh, yeah, as I said, in for Java, I can just look at my colleagues, but um, I don't know anybody personally uh, yet who I could watch uh, coding closure. And um, I think it's really hard to get the workflow right because uh, people write about it, but it's not really something that you can really look at and say, ah, yes, okay, that makes sense. I will adapt that. We get a hello from the database. Now, this is half the work. Now we can access the database. We could also store something in the database, but we don't have any tables yet. And uh, storing things in the database without any table is boring or not possible. Um, in a Java project, I'm using Flyway for this. Um, and Flyway just gives you the chance to um, put your DDL files, which define the database schema in your resources uh, on your class path. And if you boot the application up, it just um, checks what of those is already there and simply implements them in the database for you. For Clojure, there is Migratus, which is um, an awesome library to do this in Clojure. As Liffin, yes, rich comments. Um, you mentioned them last time. <laughs> My week was completely packed. I promised to look at, this, at them, uh, and I, I promise again. <laughs> Thanks. And um, so before we can write and read something in the database, we have to, or in this case, I would like to add migrators first. You can find it on GitHub. With an awesome logo. And of course, you can find it on Clojars. And you see, it's pretty popular. Adding it. And 
back to the documentation. So first, um, we need to define a baseline SQL script, which will set up the database for us. Let's do this. Um, we have the resources. We create a new folder migrations. This is by default, by um, configuration by convention. And uh, what's today's date? It's 2020, it's September, it's the 25th. It is 12, 27 and zero seconds. Um, this is not a must, but um, also with Flyway, it turned out for me that um, naming those files by current date down until seconds uh, reduces the risk that you have collisions with colleagues who also create these scripts. So now I'm back at Postgres again. Um, create table, greetings. I have to look it up. I'm, I'm on an Oracle project for two years now and I would just get it wrong. So parentheses, we know those, right? And we will add some test data for ourselves. should work. We have our table defined. Back to the migrators documentation. Closed it. Very clever. Now let's go to the REPL again. Um, I have I'm starting it anew because I added a dependency separator between multiple SQL statements. You are absolutely right, Stefan. I stumbled over this 
three times in the past and I would have made the same mistake again. Thanks a lot. Sorry for the shortcut confusion. I'm on a new keyboard. Thanks, very good reading. Going well, going really well. Okay, can't argue with that. Random B in the code. Hmm. Def my greatest config. Um, as a store, we want the database. Still readable, right? Um, with migration dir is migrations. We will um, migrators will create um, a table name, uh, a table in which it will store um, which of the statements were already executed, and uh, we define the name in the migration table name. Let's just call it migrators, and then we need a DB config, and if I'm not completely mistaken. We can just use the same as we do for next JDBC. Let's just try it. Migrate. Yeah, sometimes it's true. Okay. Um, if we are looking at the logs, it's telling us starting migrations, creating migration table migrators, running the up migration for the file we provided, and uh, in this file, create greeting table. Hey, Matthew, nice to see you. Are you streaming afterwards again? 1 p.m. as usual? Okay, um, let me quickly check in the database if everything works as expected. And it did, we have the greetings and we have migrators. Let's check. Oh, Matthew, no. I'm sorry, I was looking forward to it. And we get the result from our greetings table. Um, the big benefit of this is um, I know 
not everybody is very keen on configuring flyway or migrators like this. Um, that the application starts and it just provides its own database schema. Um, but we're doing this with Flyway in a current Java project and there is uh, a big benefit about this. And um, it is, just imagine you have three environments. You have your uh, dev environment, you have your test environment, and you have a prod environment. And on the dev, you deploy hourly. So every hour there might be a new SQL script uh, coming along. You don't, you don't want to do that from hand or by hand. So every time you start the application in that environment, migrators will check the database and will see, ah, there are new scripts I have not migrated yet and will apply the changes to that database. On the test environment, maybe you only deploy daily or even weekly. So you collected 20 DB scripts, which you need in your database to, uh, for the latest version to be compatible. And fly, um, migrators will do this for you. It will just apply all these 20 DB scripts. And if you are like me in a big enterprise project and you deploy to prod after six months again, yes, we have deploy cycles of six months, um, then migrators will possibly deploy all 250 database scripts that are needed um, to the prod and your application will work there too. Because it will always install the delta that is needed. Um, this is very nice and convenient. On the downside, um, it can be a little bit confusing if your database schema is distributed over 200 files. So um, you definitely need some different documentation to make this work flawlessly. So let's greet our user. Let's just close. Oh, no, we don't want to close cider. So I know, I know, global devs. Um, this is just for having a nice overview. We're defining the migrators config. And um, I believe we could also pass the data source we created from next JDBC directly here. But I need to check this. No, 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 no. Migrators does not support next JDBC. I believe it is built on closure JDBC. There is an open issue in the migrators repository to switch to next.jdbc. So if you are having a lot of time on your hands, consider helping out there. And we have our migrators config. And let's just call this in our main function. Was this this looks nice and on the data here select is it Greeting from greetings, where blank is DE. If we look back here, um, we now see that there is um, a namespaced keyword. Um, closure, datomic, or data hike. Um, to be honest, I don't have any experience with those because um, I concentrate on yeah, open and freely usable technology. My assumption is, or my impression is, that you cannot use datomic 
in production if you are not paying anything. I know that's uh, it's a great piece of software, um, but currently I have no no use case and I can't justify uh, using this. Um, we could do a stream learning Diatomic. That's something I would love to do, uh, but currently for this example, um, I do not have um, yeah the the knowledge to to present this to you. You are right that. Um, what we are currently doing, we could do this with any language. Um, the problem is um, that I'm, or well, yeah, it's not the problem. Um, I just wanted to present a small use case that is can be um, seen and understood by people who are not familiar to Clojure yet. Um, and I'm afraid if I just beat them over the head with Datomic, um, this is. There's enough familiar stuff here to say, okay, I could do that. And um, this is also still a terrain I'm comfortable with. So um, yeah, Matthew, maybe let's do a stream together, inspecting the diatomic. <laughs> what do you say? Um, but yeah, Sliffin, you're right. This, what we're doing here is really basic stuff. It's um, nothing special. And uh, as I said in the first stream, um, there are many people who are way more um, experienced in Clojure than I am. Um, this is just, I'm doing what I know and uh, what worked for me in the past and let people watch and comment. Um, so yeah, <laughs> Matthew Wright gets Liffin to teach it to us. Why not? Uh, are you using the Atomic uh, in, in some projects, Liffin? So we are seeing hello from the database. So mm, let me see. Fulcro Red demo. Okay, I will definitely bookmark this and check it out. Let's do it now, we have the time, right? Fulcro Rapid Application Development. The RAD project has ambitious goals, but only one primary contributor who is very busy. Ah. Extensible patterns with pre written components. Okay. I will look into this. So I get, um, I'm really not familiar with Falcro. It's a okay, library for building data-driven full stack applications for the web. It's using React and it's written in Clojure and Clojure Script. Okay. Mm, yeah, might come in handy for me. I will bookmark this definitely. And it bundles Datomic free. Yeah, why not? Um, I will take a look at it and I have no problem with uh, showing streams where I'm just learning some something. So um, uh, this would be my first hike into Closure Script two, mainly uh, concentrated on the backend until now. But back to our application. Um, what we can do now is we can route to our, our website. 
we can um, access the handler, we can render HTML on the server side, and we can show displays from the database. And we can also could also write values into the database. Again, uh, Sliff and I agree with you, this is nothing special. You could do this with JavaScript, you could do this with Java, you could do this with almost every language. Um, but um, it is nice to see how everything comes together here. So we are at 42 lines of code. And most of it is just requiring libraries. and. To be honest, I'm pretty happy with how it looks until now. So, um, not how it looks because it looks pretty bland. Um, also, um, I really like the server-side rendering approach. To be honest, um, I'm not have not fiddled around with Closure Script that much uh, because it generally focuses on React, or many libraries focus on React, and I think that React is a dependency I do not want to have in my web page if it's not really necessary. So um, I'm really convinced still that server-side rendering can deliver better performance to the end user. I know that's a controversial topic, um, but this is why I chose to go with server-side rendering for this example. Stefan, bye. Um, yeah, on this point, I would um, consider closing down the stream for today because uh, starting with HTML forms to save values in the database would be a little bit too much for now. Um, I hope you enjoyed it anyway. Um, thanks for watching again. And, um, ah, Matthew, DevC. Okay, DevC is uh, used from RUM. RUM is a front-end library for Clojure, and it is mainly used by Clojure Script developers. It's um, an unopinionated framework wrapping React by um, Nikitonsky. And um, with this, we define a component for uh, our HTML. Um, it is mainly used in Clojure Script in the front end, but it can also support server-side rendering with a hiccup-like language. And um, you can also mix this. So you can, with DevC, you can define components and render them on the server side and enhance them with client-side JavaScript React-based RAM code. And uh, this is a really nice library. Uh, check it out. You can just put it here. There's also um, some very good videos um, on the library by uh, Nikitonsky. And um, you can also follow him on Twitter. He's uh, most of the time hilarious rants about uh, bad UI design. Half of it is Russian, but there's always the Twitter translate function, right? Let's just add that here too. Ah, it's, my Twitter is on a different browser. So um, I already announced this on Twitter. Um, I have the whole day to myself tomorrow. And um, I will use this opportunity to make some music. And um, I will take this as an opportunity to finally start coding live, mu live coding music with Overtone. And I will try and create some drum and synth beats in Overtone, route it via MIDI to my Ableton digital audio, audio workstation, and then play some tracks with guitar and bass over it. I have about four hours time. I don't know how far we will come, but I'm really, really looking to, uh, forward to this stream tomorrow. Um, and if this is something that's interesting for you, just Tune in maybe for some minutes only. Uh, I will start at 6 p.m. CEST. And uh, yeah, I hope we will have a lot of fun with this. So thank you very much for tuning in again. Um, thanks for coming back. Uh, 
Stefan, Matthew, and Slyphon. And uh, I hope we can see each other next week again. Have a nice weekend. Bye. And maybe until tomorrow. <laughs>